Hello, I'm Taylor Ingram with Care Medical, manufacturer of Sequal and Aircept Respiratory Products. Today we're going to go over the initial setup of your Sequal Eclipse 5 portable oxygen system. On the table here in front of me we have all of the components that come with the Sequal Eclipse 5 when you take it out of the box. Obviously you have the unit itself here in the front. The next component we'll look at is the cart. The cart will go on the Eclipse for portability. The cart does require some assembly. Also inside of the box you'll have two wheels as well as some axle rods, washers, and cotter pins. We'll go over the assembly of a cart in just a minute. Also inside of the box with your Eclipse 5 are your three power supplies. The Eclipse will run off of battery power, AC power, which is plugged into a unit in a house, and DC power, which is plugged into an accessory outlet in a car. Each Eclipse 5 comes with one battery cartridge, as seen here. It also comes with a DC power supply for the car and an AC power supply for their home use. Both AC and DC power will recharge your battery cartridge as well as run the unit. We'll talk about that a little bit more. Also inside, you have your AC power cord, which will connect to the actual power supply shortly. You have a nasal cannula to allow you to breathe straight off of the machine. You have your user's manual, and you also have a filter here. Now on the back of the Sequoia Eclipse is the intake filter where air actually enters the unit. We provide you with a spare one of these with the machine so that you can clean the one out. Part of your weekly maintenance of the machine is to clean your intake filter. You wash it with soap and water, and it does need to be dry before you put it back in the unit. So we provide you with a second so you can swap it out and wash this one, and while it's drying and being washed, replace it with another filter. Again, that should be done once a week. And your last accessory inside of the box is your accessory bag. This attaches to the back of the cart, which we'll show you shortly, and allows you to carry extra batteries and power supplies with you for portability. All right, now we'll go ahead and assemble your cart. Do reference your instruction sheet that came with the Eclipse 5 on how to properly assemble the wheels to the cart, but it is a pretty easy process. Again, remember that the smooth side of each wheel is going to go to the outside of the cart. So we'll start by taking your axle rod and inserting it into the wheel. There is a built-in washer on one side and this will go to the outside as well, so make sure that that end faces the outside. At this point, you'll also want to install another washer on this end of the wheel. And at this point, you're ready to insert it onto the Eclipse. Okay, now we have the wheel inserted onto the cart. At this point, we'll take the second washer for this side and insert it on the end of the axle rod. And now you'll take your cotter pin and look for the hole on the axle rod, secure the cotter pin through that hole to lock the wheel in place. And now your cart wheel is fully assembled. Go ahead now and repeat the same procedure with the second wheel. All right, now that we have our cart assembled, let's install the Eclipse onto the cart and also install the battery into the back of the unit. Note on the cart here that there are two tabs on the back. There are some slots or holes on the bottom of the Eclipse that those will line up with to, in order to secure it on the cart in the proper alignment. So once you align it properly on there, note that there is a turn knob on the back that fits into this hole on the back of the Eclipse. These also need to be aligned. Once you have everything aligned properly, screw the knob in place to assemble the Eclipse to the cart. Now that the Eclipse is on the cart, we can install the battery cartridge in the back of the unit so that you're ready to run on battery power. Your battery cartridge does have a top and bottom. Note that there is text on one side. This is what we consider the top of the unit. To insert the battery into the back of the unit, simply align the battery up straight and insert it into the hole. Be careful not to use force and to install very gently until you hear it click.
The Eclipse 5 has full functionality when running on battery power. All flow rates up to 3 liters per minute and all pulse flow settings between 1 and 9 are available on battery power. To indicate that you're running on the battery, there will be an icon on the screen that shapes like a battery on the far right corner. This will cascade or waterfall when the battery is charging in an up and down manner, which you'll see here. Note how the battery icon is going up and down to display that the unit is charging. And when you're running on battery power, it will drain slowly, first showing with a full battery a fully charged black icon. As the battery begins to drain or become used, those black bars will begin to become clear or not filled up. So when the battery is no longer black, that means it is empty. As part of your maintenance of the battery, you will need to make sure you drain it completely until the machine dies and recharge it from scratch once a month. This ensures that you always get the highest and longest battery times possible and keeps your battery running for the longest period of time. Remember that your battery only comes shipped to you at 40% charge, so you will need to charge the battery fully before you begin to use the Sequal Eclipse for portability. In order to charge the battery, the best way to do that is to connect it to the AC power supply, which we'll talk about now. Your AC power supply is this brick here and a combination of the cord that you also got in the original packout. Before you can start using it, you'll need to install the cord into the power supply. It's a three-prong connection here on the side that you'll simply insert straight in and push to make a secure connection. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and plug into AC power. When you're plugged into a wall outlet, there's a green light in the top corner of your power supply brick that will light up. It's important to recognize this light because if the cord were to come loose or you were to come loose from the wall outlet, this light will go off. This light indicates that you are properly receiving power from the wall. Assuming that that light lit up, you're ready to go ahead and connect your AC power supply to the Eclipse 5. It's an elbow connection here that goes in straight to the side of the Eclipse. There's an arrow on top of the elbow connector that indicates up, and you'll push it straight into the side of the Eclipse. When you do this, the Eclipse will beep, as you hear, and will light up for a brief second. One thing that you do want to look for is to the side of the plus and minus buttons on the Eclipse, there is a green light shaped like an electrical plug. If this light is lit up, that also lets you know that the Eclipse is running from external power. Be it AC or DC power, you'll need to look for that light. So at this point, now that we're plugged in, the battery has begun to charge. As I mentioned earlier, you can see that because the actual bars of the battery are cascading or waterfalling up and down. Let's take a look at that here. Now that the unit is connected to AC power, indicated by the light over here, and the battery is charging, we are fine to go ahead and turn on the machine. To turn on the machine, hold the power button down for about two seconds and release it. When you do this, the machine will turn on and beep, and all three lights on the front display panel will light up. As you'll see gradually, the red light and the yellow light will go off. This is part of the normal warm-up period of the device. It is normal to see all three lights in the beginning. It can take up to five minutes for the red and yellow to go off, and then only the green will remain. This indicates the unit is running properly. As you see here, our flow rate is 2.5 liters per minute. This is a continuous flow setting. If you want to adjust your continuous flow, simply press the plus or minus button. The Eclipse does continuous flow from 0.5 liters per minute all the way up to 3 liters per minute. So if I wanted to go down to 1 liter per minute, I would press the down button until it reads 1.0 liters per minute. If I wanted to go to 3, I would press the up button to get to 3 liters per minute. And again, this is all continuous flow. To switch to pulse flow on the Eclipse, you press this button here with the three wavy lines. Once you press this button, the light next to it will light up, indicating you're in pulse flow, 
and the screen will change from liters per minute to milliliters. This indicates the size of your, of your bolus or each puff of air that you receive when you breathe in. Again, you can adjust the flow by going up or down. Again, note your display says 32 milliliters 2.0. This 2.0 is not a liter per minute equivalent, it's just the setting number. Your actual dosage is the 32 milliliters. There are nine pulse settings on the Eclipse, going from 16 milliliters all the way up to 192. To turn the Eclipse off, simply press the power button again and release it when the unit beeps. Now the machine is off. If you need to continue to charge the battery, that's fine, as you see by this icon here. There is no harm in leaving the unit plugged into a wall outlet for extended periods of time. Now we'll talk about the last power source, which is DC power, which is generally used in a motor vehicle or a car. Here's your DC power supply that comes with the unit. Note that it's pretty much just a smaller version of the AC power supply. You still have the brick here with a light in the top corner indicating that you're receiving power. On one end you have your elbow connector again with the arrow on top to indicate plugging straight in upright to the side of the Eclipse. On the other side is your standard connection that will go with an accessory DC outlet of any car. Now let's explore how to use it properly in the car. It's very important that you crank your car or start your vehicle before plugging in the Eclipse 5 to the DC accessory outlet and let it run for just a minute. While the car is running for just a minute, you can go ahead and properly position your Eclipse. You have several options to properly position it. You can use the front seat, you can put it in the floorboard, or you could also put it in the back seat. The important things to note as you're properly positioning is that it doesn't rattle around or fall and that the air intake filter on the back and the exhaust port on the back are not obstructed or blocked. Now you're ready to connect to your DC accessory outlet in your car. It's always a good idea to connect to the outlet that is closest to your car's battery, which is generally the one in the front seat. This draws the most consistent power. You might also want to disconnect, if you can, cell phone chargers and GPS's from other outlets. In this video, the DC power supply is already connected to the side of the Eclipse. Note that as soon as we plug it in, the green light on the power supply brick lights up, indicating we are drawing DC power. Turn on your Eclipse by pressing the power button and holding it and releasing for just a second. Here's a close-up of the screen of the Eclipse running on DC power. Note the green electrical cord light next to the plus and minus button is lit up, showing that we're drawing power from the DC external outlet. And also note there that the battery icon is cascading. We're charging at the flow rate of 0.5 and 1.0 liters per minute. The battery will charge at all flow rates 2 liters per minute or less, assuming that there is enough excess power left over from the DC outlet. Again, remember on DC power, the Eclipse will run at all settings up to 3 liters per minute continuous and pulse settings up to 9, and it will also recharge your battery cartridge at flow settings 2 liters per minute or less. Now we've explored all three power sources and we're ready for you to get going with your Eclipse. The last thing that was in the final pack out is your accessory bag. This is designed with a strap on the back to actually attach to your cart. This allows you to carry extra batteries and accessories. In order to attach it to the cart, you'll first extend the cart by pushing the button on the top and pulling upward and then find the strap on the back of the accessory bag and slide it over the cart handle. And once you insert your accessories in there, you're ready to go and enjoy life freely with your Sequoia Eclipse 5. As always, if you have questions, please contact our technical service department at the number on your screen. Thanks.